Welcome to Helicopter Train videos. We're going to cover virtual VORs, how to use them, how to create them uh, for instrument training. Here's a quick overview in case you want to jump ahead. We'll cover the whys and how to do the actual procedure in a GNS 430 series and the GTN 650, and then a little summary with some pros and cons. Why would you want to do this? Well, there's a few reasons. VORs or Vortex can get really busy. They're often used for VFR and IFR route navigation as well as multiple departure procedures, initial approach fixes, missed approach holding fixes for multiple airports. High number of practice holds can also be an issue for noise complaints in the area. Or maybe, you know, with all the VORs disappearing, maybe you just don't have one nearby. In our case, the VOR is so busy, uh, it has a dedicated ATC sector for the vicinity. It has a letter to airmen about using a discrete squawk code when operating in the area. And we also have noise complaint issues uh, with multiple aircraft holding low in that area. All of this to say, it is helpful to be able to practice holds over something other than the actual VOR. And I'm going to show you how to create a virtual VOR using the Garmin GNS 400 and 500 series and the newer 650, 750 series. Uh, these techniques will probably work in some of the other GPSs like the uh, 355, 375, 175, etc. Okay, first of all, let's look how we can do it on the 430. First step is to either create your own fix or find one nearby. Here we're using the nearest page for the nearest intersection. We're going to go to Hatmos. It's in the correct direction, looking at the bearing, and it's the correct distance. Some things to consider, of course, when you're choosing these or where you're going to set these up is, is it used for an instrument approach or is there an approach corridor in the area? As it happens, this particular fix for us is used as a uh, initial approach fix, I think, but it's used above 8,000, so we'll stay below that. Another consideration would be what frequency you're going to be on. Are you going to climb up and get flight following, or are you going to stay low on a practice frequency, that kind of stuff. And so at this point, we can just track in towards the virtual VOR. We're not using any kind of radials at this point. We're just using a direct to course. And on the way in, we can set up uh, some hold instructions. So, for example, we could say hold northeast of the Hatmo VOR on the 030 radial. Now, everyone has different techniques about how they track that uh, on a piece of paper or maybe use the heading bug. My personal technique is to set the heading bug for the radial that was assigned, uh, and then I use uh, my hand to um, give myself guidance on which sector that would be. And that's a whole separate video. But anyway, as we've got that set, we can uh, fly on, get a bit closer, and then I'll show you how we make this work with pseudo radials. Then as we cross the fix, we're going to switch to OBS mode. And that's what's going to allow us to set up these pseudo radials, if you like. So once we go over, we press the OBS button, and then we twist the OBS to put the tail of the needle on the 030 so that the magenta line shows the inbound course. Some setups with certain uh, remote HSIs may require you to actually use a little dialog box on the 430 to put in the numbers. But uh, in that case, you would just put in the reciprocal 210 uh, when you press the OBS button. It works the same. So here you can see we're doing a teardrop entry. We've got a 30 degree offset to the uh, left here. So this right hand turns. Once we've gone out a minute, we'll start a standard rate turn to the right and intercept that inbound course uh, and treat it just like you would a VOR. And like a VOR, the closer you get, the more sensitive the CDI needle gets. And as you cross over, you get a flag flip just like that. What you don't get, though, is you don't get Kona confusion. And just like a VOR here, as we come and beam the fix, you get a flag flip. And that's it. You fly the hole just like you would using a VOR. The only difference is you're in GPS mode and you don't have a cone of confusion. Next up, let's have a look at the newer Garmin products. We're going to use a 650 for this one. So first step in the 650 is like the 430. We're going to go to nearest. We're going to find an intersection that's nearby in the right direction. We'll use Hatmo again. Uh, make sure it looks good. Direct to, activate, and away we go. Make sure we're in nav mode. Make sure that the CDI is set correctly. Then we get our hold instructions. We'll use the same hold instructions again. Hold northeast of Hatmo on the VOR uh, on 030 radial. The different techniques I personally like using the heading bug to mark that up, and then I'll use my hand to work out which entry that is. It's going to be a teardrop. It's set up perfectly for a 30 degree uh, offset to the left. 
So it makes it very easy. Now we're going to switch into OBS mode, and that's the key to making it work like a, a VOR. So now we have radials, if you like, uh, an inbound and an outbound. As we get close to crossing, we need to get a timer ready, so we can use the PFD timer. And we'll see a flag flip on the CDI. There it is. So we can start the timer. And we'll just go out for one minute. We don't have to change our heading. In this setup, we're going to use the GPS, uh, sorry, the uh, Garmin autopilot. So we're in heading mode now, flying outbound for one minute. Then we can get course, and we can set in the inbound course. So what we're going to do is put the tail of the needle on the radial that we're told to hold on the 030. Let's approach one minute. We use the heading bug to drive the autopilot here. So we've now got a standard rate turn to the standard rate turn to the right. We'll put the heading bug for an intercept. Now that we've got a good intercept angle, we can switch to nav mode on the autopilot. And as we complete the turn, we'll start the timer for the inbound leg. As we cross the fix, we get a flag fit, flip, and we go through the T's. Okay, and there we can see it's already flipped. It's quite subtle in the G500, but we're now on the outbound leg, so we can go ahead and start the timer. And the rest of it's the same, just keep going round and round. So let's say you set up a virtual VOR and use it using the 430 and the 650. Uh, let's just go through a summary of the pros and cons. The pros are, while well, you can practice this anywhere, so you can set up somewhere there's maybe less traffic, there's no noise concerns. You can practice this even if the VORs are unserviceable or out of service. There's no need to tune our ID. There's no signal obstruction if you're too low. Uh, there's no cone of confusion. And this is good practice for any unpublished hold, whether you're using a VOR or a uh, a fix using RNAV. The downside though, well because there's no cone of confusion, you need to make sure your students are seeing that on a real VOR so they know how to fly when that happens. Also because there's no need to tune an ID, if you're doing this over and over they may get out of the habit of doing that which would obviously be bad. And there's also slightly different avionic inputs so you need to uh, keep mixing it up with real VOR uh, holds as well. If you want more helicopter training videos, check out our Helicopter Ground School series or the Helicopter Flight Maneuver series. Or perhaps you want to follow along with a student from day one all the way through to the check ride with our full flight lesson series. And if you haven't already, please click subscribe to get all the latest videos and help promote the channel. And finally, for more information on helicopter train videos, including articles, resources, quizzes, and more, and learn how to support this volunteer project, check out our website, helicoptertrainingvideos.com. Thanks for watching.